What are the downsides of having high intelligence? I know so much about so many things, but I also know that I know nothing. Also, not being able to cite my sources for things mostly during debates discussions with others. My source for a lot of things is years of collected knowledge on tons of topics. I can't cite my damn source because it's bits and pieces of information my brain has connected together into a larger concept. I get laughed at or told I'm wrong because I can't give a specific book, website, or news article. It's very frustrating. I don't engage in those types of conversations much anymore. The world is a dark place full of monsters who will gladly eat each other for small gains they won't even notice. They walk around claiming to be nice when really they are just evil. You think the teacher loves teaching but he's a pedo. You think the cop is righteous but he is a psychopath who loves to harm people. You think the politician is trustworthy but he is most greedy. You see friends stab each other and wives sleep behind their husband's back, get pregnant and say it's till the kid is 18. There is only the light we make, but that is dim and rare. I'm not an idiot and have a lot of smart friends that are easily relatable. I matched with a guy on a dating app once who was like a tier above anyone I've met, and he seems very lonely, and probably was depressed. I had the sense that I wasn't keeping up with his exploration of what sounded like existential dread and it made me really sad for him. I'm a social worker as well so I'm used to trying to relate to others and validating their experiences etc. It probably wasn't just high intelligence though, it was probably his depression and I was drunk too. Not relating the same to the world. I have a good friend Steve. He and I do projects together a lot and it is fun to let my nerd flag fly with him. He is objectively more intelligent than me. We both work in engineering and CS, but at the bar I end up being the interpreter. I'm more football, beer, woodworking, automation, coding, AI, generalist and he is pure CS. Our best collaboration come from my ideation, his framework, my implementation. There is a wall from the real world that handicaps him. I love Steve, but I never want to be Steve. The fact that being right takes him more luck than intelligence. The myth of an intelligence is that you're too smart to believe in Bigfoot. The reality is that if you grow up in a pro-Bigfoot environment then you might just be the best at arguing for your nonsensical belief in Bigfoot and be the champion of Bigfoot believers. Intelligence is like, 99 just being good at shit like technical boring work stuff that doesn't matter Earl and it has not all that much to do with being better at everyday thinking than most people are. I tested high but not that high. I have friends who are far smarter than me. The biggest downside is I remember so much things very vividly. Imagine marrying a spouse that remembers all the shitty things you said in pretty much every argument. Now imagine if the spouse was petty. That used to be me, I would remember the shitty things she said and use it against her perhaps 2-3 years later. So moral of the story is, if you're smart don't be petty. You will seem like a massive dickhole. Intelligence and self is an interesting topic. Some would say having a high EQ constitutes to being intelligent. Some say being able to retain information is high intelligence. I think you need both in order for people to understand you, respect you and not see you as a condescending know it all ours. The downsides are of course, being overly conscious to the point where you question everything, and want to find all the answers, only to find that the answer won't satisfy your life. The fact that you'll spend about 99 of any social interaction absolutely baffled about what others are saying because you can see every tiny fallacy in their statements and can offer nothing to say about it. There's a reason there is a saying the smartest man in the room is the most quiet. Because few people are inclined to change their perspective when you can instantly prove them wrong or you offer an explanation that uses big words they may not have in their vocabulary. I am a very highly intelligent person and I can tell you that the downside is that I feel like I should have a better answer to this question because I am so highly intelligent but I cannot, which makes me doubt my incredibly high intelligence. But if I have a high enough intelligence to realize that I am actually a fool, then it sort of feels like there's a paradox going on here. I will now spend all the rest of my days pondering this singular thought. So, there you go. Highly educated people have zero common sense. I went to school with people that are working with NASA and other highly knowledgeable and skilled companies. None of them can tie a shoelace, buckle a belt or do any menial task. Can't button a shirt, or put a pair of suspenders on pants. Ask them any complex problem or mathematical equation. They can figure it out in the mind, but have zero common sense. They can't learn it, it is too simple for them. It's a responsibility more than anything. My whole life I've been told how gifted I am and I have such a wonderful gift but it usually means I have to do more work. More is expected of me is what I'm always told. 
Is it great being able to understand things so much faster than everyone else? Yeah it makes some parts easier but it also really fucking sucks sometimes and more than once I've caught myself wishing I was just normal or average. So here's the best way to explain what being highly intelligent is like. Picture the stupidest person you know. The gap between them and the average person is likely smaller than the gap between the average person and someone who is highly intelligent. The majority of the downsides come from interacting with average people and it's more or less a magnified version of how the average person feels when they interact with a stupid person. Some of these answers are interesting. Some of them are pretentious as fuck and they make me really wonder if the person is actually intelligent or they're narcissistic just some whack job conspiracy theorist who has convinced themselves they know more than the sheep around them. None of those situations have enough information to actually make accusations on however so I'm just posting here as a blanket observation lol. It's a lot easier to get depressed, bored and lonely. Also most people are unable to understand follow you so you spend an awful lot of effort blending in. It's harder while you're young. There are things you notice that are hard to share with most people. It's tiring to have to explain what seems obvious to you all the time, so you just don't. Most intelligent people have really refined mimicry and coping mechanisms. Imposter syndrome, depression, constantly questioning reality, embarrassed by certain things about being human. I sleep 3 to 5 hours a night, I would love more. THC user abuser for some peace and quiet, turns down a constant dialogue in my head. I appear to have ADHD and to have many autistic traits. Very difficult to enjoy TV shows or movies. Socially awkward at times, motor mouth at other times. My poor wife, my beta waves higher thinking, vigilance are three standard deviations above average and my delta waves rest, restoration, relaxation are three standard deviations below average. I cannot rest. Literally, I cannot rest. Thanks to what PTSD has done to my brain, I work myself to the point of collapse and my life is spent in the shadow of total adrenal shutdown. But boy. Do I look smart while I am doing it? God doesn't give with both hands. I have been friends colleagues with a number of highly intelligent people including particle physicists, nuclear chemists, NASA engineers and tech workers of all sorts. They can be incredibly lonely. Had a colleague kill himself a few years ago. They're often a bit socially physically awkward Asperger's or with mental health issues bipolar, schizophrenia. Depression comes easily. Mine comes flavored with a healthy sprinkling of cynicism. However, which can be manipulated into a dopamine hit whenever I look at the news to see what stupidity we hominids are up to. The irony of my disappointment in my species being useful in combating despair also gives me a chuckle. Cat videos help too. Also sex. But I've never mixed the two. You start realizing how hard some things are to define like intelligence. I took an IQ test and then started looking into the science behind it. It just seems like different types and styles of intelligence are a much better model than a 1D score. I also feel so ignorant on so much, and it sucks because sometimes I don't even know how to put my questions into words. My friend, who tested for above average intelligence I don't really know what they scored, other than that they were titled as gifted was easily bored by school. They're in a great place now, with a loving spouse, kids and lots of pets and strong family binds. But growing up they often got into minor trouble because they had difficulty keeping boredom at bay. Not enough time or money to get degrees or other formal credentials and all the things I have taught myself to do but that require degrees to get hired and make any of them a profession. I respect the organization's need to promise customers that their staff is qualified. But I should just be able to go take a knowledge and skills demonstration test. Ah oh well, imagine having to relearn the alphabet in addition, every day from preschool to graduating from the mandatory education. That's what I've been told school feels like, this MF also told me my hardest graduate course was easy and a waste of her brain space. The worst part is this this piece of shit calls herself stupid, what the heck am I then? I don't know if it's intelligence but I think quick and can tackle problems from multiple angles at the same time. Causes friction at work where I feel my colleagues are moving at glacial pace. Another issue is that I constantly realize how many things I don't know and want to learn. It gets a bit overwhelming sometimes. A lot of very good and valid things being said so I won't jump in with those. I will add, however, it can be difficult to separate what should be easy or common sense versus what is easy or common sense to me. It, to a degree, takes effort to understand why someone may not understand and approach it accordingly. The mental illness that comes with it. One of my best friends was in the top one at the college he went to. 
He got hooked on meth and fentanyl. He started staying up for days at a time and was convinced I was plotting to kill him. He thought I was fucking his girlfriend I never met her. He ended up overdosing. R.I.P. The frustration of people not understanding simple to me things despite repeated explanations. Having to dumb things down and people ask what a word here or there means. People automatically assuming you'll understand something they're struggling with despite any context. Feeling lacking in life with jobs. This reminds me of the house episode where this really intelligent guy has a girlfriend wife who isn't smart. But he loves her and doesn't want to get bored of her, so he takes some kind of drugs or cold medicine maybe to dumb himself down. So he can stand to be with her. It's rather sad, really. I'm a big history nerd and I have a good memory, but it bothers me because my parents will constantly ask me questions and it exhausts me like when it was World War I? What's 9 by 4? When is Lydia's my cousin birthday? What's the capital of Australia? And I'm like God just look it up. Recognizing the complexity in life instead of just being able to accept simple answers and feeling fine. Literally every simple problem can be has been solved but the complex, persistent problems, require thoughtful deliberation which I find is too hard for the vast majority of people. While I test highly intelligent, I am constantly convincing myself that I've somehow tricked people into thinking I'm intelligent. I have a very low opinion of my own capabilities, especially relating to academic success. Imposter syndrome, I guess. Apparently that isn't uncommon.